So a quick repetition to you all. This is what we discussed yesterday. What is business and what is an organization? Varieties of organizations. So quickly giving a recall. This is business. Can you, I think you already told me what type of business you will choose if you want to start your own business. You, some of you said sole proprietary. Some of you said uh, LLP. Some of you said, uh, one of you said uh, mm, partnership, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, this is just a repetition. Now, when you again relook into it, I have another question. So you have to add one more in individually own sole proprietary and partnership. And for this, instead of sole proprietary, you have one person company, OPC. And for partnership, what is the co company form? What is the alternative for partnership? Joint venture. Why you have so much love for joint venture here? Partnership can also be run as sole proprietary can also be run as okay. sole proprietary can also be run as one person, one person per company sir sole proprietary can be run as a company which known as which is more popular as opc okay then partnership can also be run as llp sir limited llp sir LLP. Limited liability partnership. So, so that they will have a kind of company flavor, company form, transparency, whatever. But still, OPC, LLP, they are still owned by individuals. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the reason even you also answered. So, so if you want to start a company, we will start as sole proprietary or LLP, but not company owned. Company owned are private limited, public limited, listed, public limited, unlisted, public limited and multinational, which is listed in overseas markets also. Okay. So my question to you is, our course is financial management. Actually, it is corporate financial management. Our subject financial management is relevant to which form of organization is that a or b that's my question b sir b sir simple as that i was trying that only okay so corporate finance is more complex it is more challenging uh, its scope is much bigger when it is compared to individual owned organizations i'm not saying there is no financial management there but my students are here, joined this MBA program and trying to learn financial management because they want to solve the corporate solutions, which are very big in nature and complex in nature. Fine. And the complexity increases when it is private limited to public limited, public limited to listed, listed to multinational. That's what the hierarchy is all about. Fine. Then, so you all are clear, right? Whatever we discuss, business organization, you should be very clear about. There are big companies which are private limited, public limited, listed, and multinationals. Whatever the corporate finance topics you will be learning, this is all for these kind of companies. You should be very, very clear on that. So we discussed yesterday, what is a sole proprietary? What is partnership? Okay. Then when you go for a company, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? This also we have seen. The comparison of company versus partnership, this also we discussed. Now, as we just concluded today, right now in the session that our financial management is more about corporations. So let us understand what is a corporation and what is corporate environment in a better way. So just go through it, please. So I had been using the word 
they are uncontrollable they are challenging they are bigger they are uh, uh, they are always problematic kind of thing why because some of them are internal some of them are external so internal factors are more controllable external factors let it be domestic or international i think uh, they are they are they are not at all uh, controllable they are not in your hands you can manage them you have to handle them you have to find alternatives okay when there was a demonetization issue then companies can't uh, say no for it okay when there is a pandemic situation last year and this year you can't uh, do anything else you give your best in the given scenario you can see companies are still coming for public issues in spite of uh, uh, severe pandemic situation markets have pro- they are crossing uh, they are reaching new highs may I know what is the sensex yesterday or today or day before yesterday anyone i guess quickly some rough idea sensex or nifty anything will do can you hear me yes so 52000 around 52000 sir around 52000 so the sense yes. every in the last year, last year this time not even this time in the month of uh, april itself market crashed assuming this pandemic situation will kill business and it came to uh, lowest levels it was around 20000 it came to 10000 levels you know market was in a panic situation i don't know whether you followed that or not but now you see i think within no time it has crossed 50000 plus it has uh, reached 53000 also so what i'm trying to say is these external factors you cannot control them you cannot suppress them you have to give your best optimize your operations optimize your utilities optimize your resources and maximize the profits so corporate environment looks like this internal factors external factors so some of the major internal factors which will disturb or which will promote positivity of the company are company's own people the founders who are also the shareholders major shareholders they are also known as promoters and they are also part of uh, management managers if you take mukesh ambani he is the founder he is a part of he is not founder maybe uh, one way he is founder for jio so he is the founder he is he promoted that product his that company and he is also the manager he is also into management for that company also i need to check the exact who is the ceo of jio someone is closely following jio you gave me cfo of that company also who is the ceo of jio anyone yes sir atul kanshal sir atul kanshal okay fine so maybe mukesh ambani is not there in active in jio uh, okay you can find it out for your curiosity so i think he was if i am not wrong he is the managing director kind of thing uh, for reliance industries i believe so sometimes we have founders promoters managers are the same sometimes they are different infosys uh, uh, one of the founders narayan murthy is out of the company but still he is one of the founders nandan nilkeni and he is uh, we were sitting in the board also for long time he was not uh, out of it and he is not also having any stake he does is not a shareholder also but he is a founder still then organization structure i think in the first semester you learned different uh, line function staff function matrix form of organization structure vertical organization structure or horizontal organization structure autocratic democratic one to one many to one one to many kind of structures are there it all depends on the organizational philosophy which creates problems or leverages problems it depends and employees and managers visakhapatnam port trust though it is not a company 
it is known it is always there in uh, top 3 ports in india many times it was in number 1 position though it has less number of berths compared to uh, uh, mumbai or chennai it always handles the cargo efficiently because of good industrial relations or uh, good employee behavior or output labor output uh so th- sometimes employees are the problem sometimes employee are the reasons for growth of a company then technology yeah banking indian banking had a challenge when uh, uh global trust bank brought the technology and it started sweeping the market with more customers followed by icici bank hdfc bank and so on public sector banks like punjab national bank state bank of india andhra bank canara bank vijaya bank they had no clue what to do then government of india through its uh, chairmen of respective banks they clearly gave the signal do or die if you can't use the technology please take vrs voluntary retirement scheme and with that offer those who are there they used to train the people i think you can check with your parents some of your parents would have suffered this kind of stress because technology was not known to them but still banks were asking them to do it it happened in india so technology contributes sometimes technology may kill also yeah there are security issues kind of things then uh, financing our area finance and investments how it kills how it makes a company grow then uh, operating environment uh, so with the latest methodologies logistics operations transportation layouts designs and so on there are many things to discuss all these things will come into internal and some some companies may also have foreign operations through subsidiaries or imports so i i just listed out uh, there are some important areas related to a company which are internal then external factors there are many customer is the first one your client different uh, uh, software companies they use the word client they don't use the word customer customer is the one who aggressively demands pricing low price and at the same time he demands or she demands quality so you cannot control you have to serve to the needs of the customer or you have to fool the customer through advertisements and so on you have to lie with a lot of brand ambassadors you know i i had boost i had orlex boost the secret of my energy actually those celebrities are suffering from many problems but they say yeah boost the secret of my energy so it is it is yours you have to manage the customer and competition yeah you have to deal with competition you have to dictate terms or accept terms that's a choice then investors in find in funding your business you don't have a clue You, you have to go for a public issue go for a private equity go for uh, invite a venture capitalist to boost your company and scale, scale the operations it's all up to you right it's a choice then external factors i think i gave the example of public sector banks it is inevitable for the banks to change so that way my example is an external factor for banking system in india okay for many it is a choice if it is a choice it is an internal factor if you believe technology will increase the production increase the profits yeah you will go ahead and make a decision but as an external factor yeah computer should be installed there should be an automation and later also now all the banks are online if you are not online no one is going to do banking with you so it's mandatory to do banking so when you go to phone pay to some customer online payments upi if there is no upi you will be losing your customers so switch your pay billing method payment method or purchase methods to technology so it's do or die situation again the markets nearness to markets away from the markets online markets e-commerce uh, apps you should be running on apps okay i think flipkart for several years it was on e-commerce web based e-commerce till the time amazon came into the picture i think it was not ready for 
app based e commerce now it also started app based okay tata click also got started because of the success of amazon in the app or the website and uh, uh, flipkart becoming so big they understood the importance and easiness of online markets or mobile based markets you need to understand the markets when economic indicators like inflation stock indices interest rates fdis fpis foreign exchange rates lending rate okay all these are the indicators where you need to borrow or you need not you should not borrow you need to repay the loans they will indicate you they will tell you and political scenario the conflict between uh, different parties ruling parties and uh, uh, opposition parties left wing right wing and the agenda of the ruling uh, uh, political party the new government policies you can see gst how gst has taken uh, given revenue to government and corporates also got adjusted to them they couldn't say no they protested initially to let them uh, uh, be out of gst then later on oh from 24% please cut it down to 18% those who are in 18% they requested the government to bring it down to 12% like that they are different slabs different levels types of brackets for gst then uh, legal legal to company law board register of companies sebi these things are very important because nowadays things surveillance is more important to government uh, different scams happening you know people are going away from the country and people are closely watching the, the those who are at the high debt uh, equity ratios people who are aggressively borrowing who which stock price is very high you know some kind of observation is there okay i think uh, because adani group shares have gone up sebi has internally uh, ordered for a probe which was confidential and then because of that there were some rumors which came out they remained as rumor market crashed a few days back i don't know how many of you observed adani groups uh, stocks uh, uh, crashed they nosed right and uh, uh, those who bought at the those prices you know they went up later okay this happened because of the false news that a yeah, market regulator sebi is probing into unwanted uh, holdings of uh, adani group stocks through fpa through mauritius route they have identified uh, three uh, companies three fpas and the rumor was sebi nsdl has blocked or seized all the shares of adani group which were held by these three fpas who came from mauritius route so that that was just a rumor adani gautam adani he himself came out to the media and told there's nothing like that you can check with that nsdl also confirmed we didn't freeze any uh, stocks of adani group it was just a rumor so external factors they are quite dangerous and you need to be very careful with them so more the manager's role is more to manage the external things internal things is fine at least uh, you can dictate terms but external they are very tough you need to pay a lot of attention then our point is financial management for a company which is we understood the corporate environment we understood internal factors we understood external factors now with all these things let us focus only on managing financials now when you talk about the finance the word finance okay there will be some confusing words okay uh, money cash capital fund currency exchange kind of things okay so what do you say finance and all these terms are the same or they are the different what do you say my difference may no from you no and even they are same so sure okay that's it anyone else my question is finance capital fund currency money exchange cash they are the same or different 
different sir. Same sir. Different sir. Different. Okay. So I'm happy the class is divided. I'm happy that you shared your own views. Okay. Once you get the understanding, there should be no differences. You will be on one track. Okay. Let me tell you. I agree with those students uh, uh, who said they are different. They are different in the sense they mean something else. Okay. Let us say something. I think in early classes, I think in first semester business economics class also, we discussed what is money, functions of money, medium of exchange, store of value, okay, measure for value, so on. So that is money. There's no doubt about it. You're clear with money, am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So money when you have in your hand or in your pocket, you call it as cash. You can see that readily it, it is ready to use. Okay? That is cash. If it is not there with you, you don't call it as cash. It is there in your bank means it is in the bank. It is there ready to be dispersed in the form of a check means you don't use the word cash. You use the word check or draft. Okay? Or paycheck or traveler check whatever you have debit card credit card with you which is eligible to represent your cash or money deposited in the savings bank of your on your account in a bank but still that is not cash that is not money it represents money okay fine then currency is the money is the name given for a country's money okay Money, currency is the word given to uh, fiat money. I think in the earlier classes, we discussed history of money. From barter system, it moved on to livestock. From there, it moved on to metals. Even shells. Shells were also used as money. Then precious metals were widely used. Gold was popular one. From gold, we switched on to fiat money, which is known as currency. Printing of notes and minting of coins, we are called as currency. So Indian currency is rupee. Pakistani currency is also rupee. Nepali currency is also rupee. But this is Pakistani rupee, that is Nepali rupee. Ours is Indian rupee. American currency is dollar. New Zealand currency is dollar. Australian currency is also dollar. Okay. Singapore currency is also dollar. But this is American dollar or USD. That is Australian dollar. This is New Zealand dollar. This is Singapore dollar. So that way every country has its own currency. So money in fiat money, fiat money form we call as currency. Then when two countries currencies, two countries money, which we call as currency. If it is exchanged, we call it as foreign currency exchange. In short, exchange or foreign exchange. Am I clear? Are you with me? Yes, yes sir. Are you following? Yeah. If you don't get it, please stop me and ask me anytime. Then capital. Capital is the word used related to money which is meant for investment. Companies have capital. Okay. Companies have capital for investment. How do they get capital? That is where we talk about financing. Okay. If the company has its own capital, we call it as equity capital. Okay. If the company is not having its own capital, it is borrowed capital. This borrowing process we call it as financing. Raising capital from other sources we call it as financing. Okay. Then funding is a little different. We you literally use the word uh, fund for finance also, but there is little difference. Mutual benefit fund. Okay. Society fund. Mutual fund. Cheat fund. So the fund here is this is the money which is collected from many sources for some common purpose. Okay, the examples of cheat fund and mutual fund are the best resources. 
best examples let us not go into it but finance is the one where company raises money from other sources which is not from internal if it is internal yeah that is also part of finance management but actual financing is external borrowing or externally raising the money or capital for business needs or the business organizational needs corporation needs companies needs we called as finance financing okay now when we take company takes money from banks yeah it is financing it takes money from public it is financing it is it borrows from government it is financing it goes for public issue for financing yeah that is also finance so they don't get confused this is a real difference between all these terms related to finance fine then it's all about money management okay it's all about timing not only timing it's all about discipline so that you have to pay repay at time and you should look for minimum cost of capital many companies they don't survive forgot about growth they don't survive they lose their survival and they lose their identity because they have they don't have financial discipline i think at the individual level also persons with the finance discipline they excel okay persons with uh, poor finance uh, financials they suffer a lot poor people they suffer a lot because they don't follow the financial rules they borrowed higher cost and try to postpone whatever okay so conceptually we are here literally financial management or finance management or corporate finance management is the process of identifying procuring and using them or utilizing them effectively to maximize the wealth of the shareholders okay shareholders value should increase that is what we mean by financial management so once you leave the institute with an mba degree and you are placed in a company as a financial manager this is what you will be doing my dear friends be ready for that so that we'll be learning practically and how it looks like when you're sitting in a company as financial management manager maybe in initially you not get a position as finance manager but uh, uh, you you start as a, a finance associate or research associate finance training management training kind of things okay so finance deals with money and it integrates all functional departments that's how it is known as a uh, life blood of the company it is more related to accounting economics and qu quantitative met methods or mathematics so there is a misapprehension that if you want to learn financial management you should be a commerce guy you should be an accounting guy no you should be a math guy at b schools wherever i work the premier b schools a majority of them are b techs some of them are from iits they used to come to me sir uh, uh, prof uh, i want to take finance but i'm not from commerce background i'm from b tech I, i have good math i'm good in quant but i'm not good in uh, commerce or accounting can i take finance right so they're wrong in putting that question and need not be economics completely also why because to take financial management to excellent finance anyone with any background can take financial management as their specialization why because it is a mix of accounting or commerce economics and quantitative methods at the basic level it will be taught to you in mba program itself okay you not worry at all then different types i think in the opening session of the course i told you that we'll be dealing with corporate finance only i think the fifth one we are not talking about personal finance we are not talking about private finance we are not talking about public finance okay maybe to some extent we'll be talking about finances of npos which are government organizations or non government organizations because they are much bigger okay 
business finance will be do- dealing where the companies are more with private limited public limited and mnc's now the question is sir why should we learn financial management in the second semester itself i didn't take financial management i may take i may not take in future okay this is the answer okay of course those who are taking financial management or finance as the specialization in your second year that is in your third semester and fourth semester this is well and good this is fine but for those who are not who are strongly decided not to take right now then why should they learn about financial management this is the answer okay whether you are taking or not wherever you work or whatever the business you do in future okay you should be dealing with finances and you need to have a clear idea about corporate finance financial markets institution services banking stock market stock markets are pulling everyone into the bracket nowadays you should know about insurance mutual funds and so on what not okay. then you should not be lost that's the reason this is taught to you it is not for individual it is for individual who is going to a business person or working for a public limited company or mnc in different functions okay and even if you are into hr if you are into marketing if you are into operations if you are into it if you are not aware of finance you are handicapped you are conceptually functionally you are handicapped because others will dominate you you should know how the funds will come if you want to go for new branding project new advertisement project if someone wants to go to the ceo for a, a celebrity endorsement proposal he or she should be completely thorough of the financial situation of the company right now if not you will be blasted in the meeting room okay they may ask you hey dear are you not aware of the financial situation right now why did you bring this proposal to us right now okay and at the same time if you feel the financials of the company are so good and you go to a, a celebrity endorsement proposal they'll be so happy oh my dear you have brought this proposal at the right time because now we have the breathing space yeah we can go ahead thank you they may thank you also so that way whether you are working for someone or you are working for your own company yeah this is needed i wish you got convinced if you are not still convinced you can ask me sir why finance if i don't take finance in next year you can ask me please i can answer you any question quickly please is it clear yes sir yes sir okay fine so then i'm just giving you little differences not to confuse don't get confused don't treat finance and accounting as the same please they are completely different accounting is as old as money finance is very young it was widely known and popular only in early 20th century okay even before that also it was there but because of uh, re- recession in us in 20s uh, first world war second world war you know uh, there was a there was a severe deficit for funding within themselves they couldn't find out so there was a lot of uh, innovation engineering done in borrowing processes uh, fund raising processes that's how financial management got evolved so i gave you in detail you can go through them okay some of them are repeated i'm telling you if you want to excel in finance you do mba finance or cfa in india or offered by cfa institute usa if you do mcom if you do ca if you do icwa 
you cannot become an investment analyst you cannot become a derivative product expert please don't misunderstand at the same time if you want to expertise in accounting you cannot go with mba finance you should do bcom mcom you should be caswa or cpa acca or cma but not cfa and mba finance there is a huge difference between these two. so for some reasons public sector companies they do employ icwas and cas as finance person for both finance and accounting because of their nature and scope and character of the businesses that's a different story we are talking about pure finance and pure accounting qualifications and certifications and functions and more information is given here and this will sort out all the doubts you can see here it's very very clearly given to you and if you still have some uh, doubt you can ask me right now or you can call me later you can put it in the whatsapp group also okay and then the come back come to the real corporate finance it's also known as business finance financial management corporate finance managerial finance you call anything they refer to the same thing i think we already uh, differentiated you may have business personally you may have finance personally but we are dealing only with corporate business finance or corporate financial management okay so the other names for this is i i already told you it's known as business finance corporate business finance corporate finance financial management corporate financial management managerial finance and so on it's just a repetition to you and uh, this is uh, again a kind of repetition which we discussed in the last session actually okay this is self explanatory there is some interesting observation about uh, financial management or finance or business finance till 1900 or uh, till uh, uh 20th century it is always part of economics then after 1900 or in 20th century it slowly got disintegrated from economics okay so i just mentioned all those things there is an interesting story about this you can go through this wikipedia is the best source it is giving you a hell lot of information with all the links you know you can surf you can be lost yourself with all the interesting information so i think decade wise i gave the capital budgeting kind of tools came only in 1950s they are not there in 30s or uh, 40s okay that will be discussing the future classes then later on uh, uh economists who got the nobel prizes they started they are the economic professors working on uh, financial products okay uh modigliani and miller markowitz william sharp all these have given their own works and these works they continue to uh, go on as the things come up then uh, cfo's concept came only in 90s earlier it was not there and uh, they, now i think in the current scenario finance means stock market <laughs> whoever talks about the finance yeah it is stocks uh, so that was interesting uh, about this now can you tell me what are the objectives of financial management can you hear me yes sir to enhance the safety of the investors and to provide the correct capital structures to the company okay okay fine agree sorry anyone else quickly and optimum okay. utilization of the maximization and wealth maximization okay i think we already discussed that there are two objectives of any corporate financial management 
one is profit maximization other one is wealth maximization what's the difference between these two actually would you like to give a guess what exactly is the difference between profit maximization and wealth maximization wealth means revenue of the firm sir revenue revenue of the company and profit means okay. the net profit of the company that year good 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 try okay. anyone else hey bbas <laughs> Okay, fine. See, profit well, maximization is an. Uh, yeah, go on. Go can on. I say, wealth maximization yeah. is a long-term objective of the company to increase the value of the stock of the company, sir, and thereby good. increasing the wealth of the shareholders. Very good. Very good. Thank you. See. a person is working as an employee okay year on year he or she as an employee will have some dreams okay a person a typical employee he or she will talk about yeah this year i should perform well i should be the best employee my increments good should go up my my employer my boss should propose for one or two or five or 10 increments hmm, with my performance then i will give a big party this is one way of looking at a employee hmm? then there is one more employee he or she she is no she is unrest she is not happy whatever even the employer is giving good salary and so on but still that employee is not happy why because that employee is not happy with the salary he or she feels she can do better and maybe her salary should be doubled or tripled okay if she works in the same organization this is not going to happen then what she has to do find a better job move to a better place move to a big organization demand for large a huge package provided what you feel is the reality okay i wish you got the difference did you yes sir yeah yes, so i've seen many companies which are public limited which are owned by my friends my dad's friends you know my relatives some of them even my students they are so happy with the profits they enjoy sir last year i got uh, 50 lakh net profit you know i am aiming to get maybe 60 lakhs next year even if i get 50 lakhs also you know uh, i am happy but if it grows i am so happy kind of thing okay but i tell them are yaar you have huge potential why are you working just on profits you need to scale up you need to get into different verticals you move to hyderabad you need move to bangalore what is there in vizag you know but some of them follow me some of them don't okay so what i'm trying to tell you here is when you look at the objective of a company is profit maximization and wealth maximization wealth maximization is much bigger and long term profit maximization is year on year okay when a company has profit maximization as the objective then its stock price is almost flat almost flat it you don't find much increase maybe if the profits are increasing it may increase a little 5% or 1% or 2% or whatever you can cross check with your favorite stock of uh, uh, known companies in your region or known whatever hmm? i think you already gave me some companies no with ceos cfos where your parents are working you love that company you can check but the company with the wealth maximization of the objective they look at the long term managers any company's manager which are mncs listed you know they have to give the proposals to make their company bigger every year profits they will happen they are not worried about profits at all so wealth maximization is all about scaling up the business 
growing up the turnover increasing the profits exponential growth not mere profit uh, increase not mere profit maximization they want exponential growth okay you have seen uh, startups becoming uh, unicorns nowadays uh, reaching uh, uh, a billion dollar value within 100 days i think it's not a joke so that is where the maximization <laughs> forgot about uh, year on year profit they look at few days okay so wealth maximization is much, much bigger if you are in a company where objective is wealth maximization you are playing in a bigger scale you are playing a bigger game you will learn bigger things okay you, did you get that my dear students did you understand yes so yeah Yes, so sir. it's up to you which kind of a company you want to run if you are having your own startup or if you want to work for someone else it is up to you which kind of company you would look at so have a look into your own companies and try to uh, understand these companies are objected to maximize the wealth of the shareholders or not you get the answer okay so with that our session is done uh first unit we are finished we'll be moving on with the second unit uh, from tomorrow onwards saturday onwards i think tomorrow we have the session by 12:15 am i right mani and vasupratha hello yes sir yes yeah so any questions on this topic today you please let me know is it clear or you can ask me clear sir Uh, okay maybe time is not sufficient you're saying if not tomorrow's class also you can ask me get your questions accumulated and ask okay thanks for your participation have a nice day meet you tomorrow 12:15 bye bye thank you sir